Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about ossifying fibroma. So before uh, starting our topic, uh, here you can see the classification of fibrosis lesions of uh, jaws that has been provided by the World Health Organization in 2005. So here you can see there are seven, uh, you know, the type of uh, types of lesions given here. So first of all, we have uh, ossifying fibroma, and then we have fibrous dysplasia, then we have osseous dysplasia. In osseous dysplasia, uh, there are, you know, further uh, sub uh, classification that is uh, periapical osseous dysplasia, focal osseous dysplasia, florid osseous dysplasia, familial gigantiform cementoma, and then uh, we have central giant cell granuloma, uh, cherubism, aneurysmal bone cyst and solitary bone cyst. We will discuss about uh, these conditions or lesions later on. Today we will talk about ossifying fibroma. So uh, ossifying fibroma is also known as cementifying fibroma or cemento ossifying fibroma. Yeah. So it is a true neoplasm with a significant growth potential. Uh, it resembles uh, focal cementosseous dysplasia uh, radiographically and to a lesser extent histopathologically. Uh, yes, this point is very important. That is true ossifying fibroma are relatively uncommon or they are rare. Okay. So basically it is composed of fibrous uh, tissue that contains a variable mixture of bony trabeculi, cementum like spherules or both. So uh, there were, you know, prior theories of uh, its origin. So and uh, it tells us about that these, uh, you know, ossifying fibroma arises from periodontal ligament and it has odontogenic, uh, you know, origin. But uh, microscopically identical neoplasm with cementum-like differentiation also have been reported in the orbital, frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, and temporal bones. So uh, these theories are open to questions. And yes, uh, the cementum-like cementum material that is present in ossifying fibroma are, you know, variation of bone. So, uh, uh, what is uh, the main reason of ossifying fibroma? What is the causative uh, agent or what is the cause of ossifying fibroma? So, uh, recently uh, there have been some, you know, studies regarding mutations in the tumor suppressor gene that is HRPT2. But, uh, you know, the function of HRPT2 protein product and the mechanism by which mutations in this gene lead to tumor formation are not well understood. So, basically, these, you know, you can say uh, these studies are not uh, verified yet. So, uh, you know, it needs further studies about uh, these mutations. So, clinical features, uh, you know, um, it has a wide age range. Uh, third and fourth decades of life are common. Uh, it is most commonly found in female, and uh, the mandible is uh, most commonly involved in maxilla. And in mandible, the premolar and molar uh, areas are most commonly involved. Here you can see uh, there is enlargement enlargement of uh, the posterior maxilla caused by a large ossifying fibroma. Here you can see it. Okay. Uh, so we are talking about clinical features. Uh, if we talk about small lesions, so seldom causes any symptoms and are detected only on radiographic examination. So small lesions are basically asymptomatic. But if we, if we talk about larger lesions or tumors, so of course it will cause you know uh, painless swelling and uh, you know it will cause facial asymmetry. Uh, one important thing is that pain and paresthesia are rarely associated with ossifying fibroma. So now we'll move to radiographic features. Uh, it has a well-defined and unilocular borders, may appear completely radiolucent, more often varying degrees of radio opacities are noted. Okay, so uh, may appear completely radiolucent. It means that the area, uh, you know, that area will be dark on radiograph with some degrees of uh, you know whitish material uh, in that uh, dark area okay 
So true ossifying fibromas that become largely radio opaque with only a thin radio listener peripheries are uncommon. I have told uh, told it earlier that true you know ossifying fibromas are rare. So, so the same point is written here that uh, you know true ossifying fibromas that become largely largely radio opaque with only a thin radio listener periphery are uncommon. Okay. So root divergence or resorption of roots of teeth can be there. If you talk about large lesions, characteristic downward bowing of the inferior cortex of the mandible can be there. Okay. So uh, here you can see the mixed, uh, you know, uh, radio uh, lucent and radio opaque lesion expanding the posterior maxilla. If we talk about histopathological features, uh, in a few cases, a fibrous capsule surrounding the tumor can be found. Can be found. Okay, most are not encapsulated. Most are not encapsulated. Few cases are encapsulated, but most are not encapsulated. Well demarcated grossly and macroscopically from the surrounding bone, and this is uh, why it can be, you know, enucleated. Ossifying fibromas consist of a fibrous tissue and contains mineralized material. Variation in the types of mineralized material produced may be helpful in distinguishing ossifying fibroma from fibrous dysplasia, which has a more uniform pattern, os pattern of osseous differentiation. So uh, this is the point where you can differentiate, uh, you know, fibrous dysplasia from ossifying fibroma. So you know, in uh, fibrous dysplasia, the uh, osseous uh, pattern is much more uniform. Okay. So this is a, a gross specimen showing a well circumscribed uh, uh, tumor that shelled out in one piece. Here, here you can see well circumscribed tumor. Uh, so now we'll move to a treatment and prognosis. Uh, if, it, if the lesion is uh, smaller in size, uh, then we can go for enucleation. If the lesion is larger, then surgical resection and bone grafting will be needed. Uh, the prognosis of this disease is very good and the recurrence is very rare. Okay, And there is no evidence that ossifying fibromas are ever going to change into malig malignant lesions. Okay. Uh, so these are the references so that's that's it about ossifying fibroma it's me dr jk and you if you have any questions regarding ossifying fibroma you can uh, drop your uh, you know questions in the comment box below uh, if you liked this video please subscribe to my channel and i will try my level best to provide you further information regarding oral path and all the medical stuff so till then take care bye bye